Welcome back to Nomo Studio. Sa video na ito ay magsasagot tayo ng mga tanong tungkol sa Article 1 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution entitled The National Territory. This video contains 10 item questions with 4 multiple choices at ipapaliwanag natin ang bawat sagot. Stay tuned until the end para wala kang mamiss na mga details dito. Sige, simulan na natin. Question number 1. What is the definition of national territory as stated in the 1987 Philippine Constitution? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. The 1987 Philippine Constitution defines national territory as the entire archipelago, including all its islands and waters embraced therein, and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction consisting of its terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial domains, including its territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, the insular shelves, and other submarine areas. And that is uh, from Article 1, Section 1 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Therefore, the correct answer is letter A, the land, water, and airspace within the Philippines' jurisdiction. Kasi tatlo po yung sakop ng teritory sa Pilipinas. Hindi lang po land area, hindi lang po water area, or airspace, kundi tatlo po yung land, water, and airspace mismo. Kasi nga ang pambansang teritoryo ng Pilipinas ay binubuo ng buong kapuloan kasama na ang lahat ng mga isla at tubig na nakapaloob dito. At ang lahat ng iba pang teritoryo kung saan mayroong pag-aari o jurisdiction ang Pilipinas. So now let's proceed to question number two. How many nautical miles is the Philippines' territorial sea from the baseline? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. Is it 12 nautical miles, 22 nautical miles, 32 nautical miles, or 42 nautical miles? The correct answer is letter A. It's 12 nautical miles. Ang territorial ng Pilipinas or territorial sea ay extended or umaabot ng hanggang 12 nautical miles or 22.2 kilometers mula sa baseline nito. At uh, ito ay in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or on clause of which the Philippines is a signatory. This only means that the Philippines has exclusive jurisdiction over the waters within 12 nautical miles of its coast and may exercise control over foreign vessels passing through these waters. Ngunit ano ba yung tinatawag na baseline? So the baseline po is uh, used as a reference point from which the extent of the territorial sea as well as other maritime zones which is measured. So the baseline of the Philippines is determined by the coastline of its archipelagic baselines. So ito ay dinefined po ng UNCLOS or yung United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. So within the territorial sea, the Philippines exercises sovereignty over its waters, airspace, and seabed. Ang ibig sabihin din ito na ang Pilipinas ay may authority to enforce the laws and regulations including customs, immigration, and environmental laws within the area or within 12 nautical miles from the baseline of the Philippine Territorial Sea. Question number 3. What is the extent of the Philippines Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ? Is it 200 nautical miles from the baseline, 250 nautical miles from the baseline, 300 nautical miles from the baseline, or 350 nautical miles from the baseline? So, it is uh, a very important to note that the Philippines Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ I extended. So, it extends beyond its territorial sea and covers an area of 200 nautical miles from its baseline. So, within the EEZ, ang Pilipinas po ay mayroong special rights to explore and exploit natural resources including fish stocks, oil, and gas reserves. Ang United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS pa rin po ang magdidetermina ng Philippines Territorial Sea at EEZ kung saan sila ang nagsiset out ng legal framework for the use and protection of the world's oceans and marine resources. Next, we have question number 4. What is the basis of the Philippines' claim to Saba? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. 
The Philippines' claim to Saba is based on historical and legal grounds. The claim is rooted in the fact that the Sultanate of Sulu, a sovereign Muslim state in the southern Philippines, once held ownership and control over Saba, also known as North Borneo. So, ang pag-claim ng Pilipinas sa Saba ay nakabatay sa mga pangkasaysayan at legal na dahilan. Ito ay nakabatay kasi sa katotohanan noong unang panahon dahil ang isang sultanato ng Sulu kung saan siya ay matatagpuan sa southern part of the Philippines. Siya ay nagmayari at nangasiwa sa Saba, na kilala rin bilang isang North Borneo. The Philippines' claim to Saba is uh, also supported by international law particularly the principle of self-determination and the right of indigenous peoples to their ancestral lands. And at the same time, the Philippines argues that the Sulu people, who are uh, predominantly Muslim and culturally distinct from the rest of the Philippines, have a right sila po ay may karapatan to self-determination and to control their ancestral homeland. At ang Saba po ay uh, kasalukuyang tinatawag na North Borneo kung saan ito ay uh, belong to the territory of Malaysia. Ito po ang nakalagay sa mga articles na nabasa ko and the Philippine government had uh, formally filed a claim to Saba during the administration of President Diosdado Macapagal again on the basis of a historical and legal fact. Sa kasalukuyan kasi, there are still issues to the Philippines' claim sa Saba which is uh, remain unresolved and sometimes it is a source of tension between the Philippines and Malaysia. And at the same time, despite sa mga nangyayari, both countries have maintained pa rin sa kanilang diplomatic relations and uh, through peaceful means such as bilateral negotiations and consultations. And now let's proceed to question number 5. What is the status of the Spratly Islands according to the 1987 Philippine Constitution? Is it integral part of the Philippines territory or disputed territory? or territory under the control of China, or territory under the control of Vietnam? The correct answer is letter B, disputed territory. Bakit ano bang disputed territory? It refers to a geographical area or region whose sovereignty or control is claimed by multiple countries or parties, and whose ownership or control remains unresolved or contested. Ang Spratly Islands po ay hindi considered as integral part of the Philippines territory. Bakit? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng integral part of the Philippines territory? Kapag sinabi po natin integral part of the Philippines territory, it refers to geographical areas or regions that are legally and constitutionally recognized as part of the Philippines and are subject to the sovereignty and jurisdiction of the Philippine government. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, we cannot consider yet that the Spratly Islands is an integral part of the Philippines territory kasi ito po ay, uh, kumbaga, hindi pa legally and constitutionally recognized ang Pilipinas to, uh, to have a sovereignty and jurisdiction uh, over the Spratly Islands. Dahil nga, ang Spratly Islands ay kasalukuyan na pinag-aagawan pa rin ng multiple countries which is uh, yung uh, kanilang pag-claim ng ownership and control over the territory ay still hindi pa rin po resolved and contested. Question number 6. What is the basis of the Philippines' claim to the disputed territories in the South China Sea? Is it historical grounds, cultural grounds, legal grounds, or economic grounds? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer and you may pause the video to have more time. Actually, letters A, B, and C are correct. Historical grounds, cultural grounds, and legal grounds. Why? Because the Philippines' claim to the disputed territories in the South China Sea, uh, including na yung Spratly Islands and Scarborough Shoal, ay nakabase po sa tatlong ito, historical, cultural, and legal grounds. Historical siya kasi the Philippines has claimed that the disputed territories were under the jurisdiction of the Philippine government kahit pa noong unang panahon ng pag uh, modern day in the China, no modern day China. The Philippines ag argues that the Spratly Islands and Scarborough Shoal were discovered and uh, used by Filipinos including the indigenous Tagalog people so as early as 13th century. And at the same time, may legal grounds ang Philippines to claim the said uh, disputed territories kasi ito ay nakabase sa United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS. 
uh, kung saan uh, we, uh, they establishes the maritime entitlements and rights of coastal states. Kasi sabi ng UNCLOS, it recognizes that the Philippines economic, uh, Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ in the South China Sea. Kung saan uh, naka-included na dito yung disputed territories, yung Scarborough Shoal, kasama na yung uh, Spratly Islands. As a coastal state, the Philippines has the right to explore and exploit the natural resources in its EEZ, as well as to exercise sovereignty and jurisdiction over its continental shelf. And at the same time, may cultural basis din po ang Pilipinas na ang disputed territories ay is a part of the cultural heritage and identity of the Philippines. Kasi yung indigenous communities natin, ay indigenous people living in the surrounding waters and coastal areas have a long-standing relationship with the disputed uh, territories. And uh, also, which are considered uh, sacred and uh, significant to their traditional practices and beliefs. Kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, may ilang mga countries pa rin na nagkiklaim ng sovereignty over the same territories in which uh, ito ay nagkukos minsan ng tension sa iba't ibang mga countries kagaya ng China, Taiwan at saka Vietnam. Question number 7. What is the Philippines policy towards foreign military bases in its territory? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. You may pause the video. The correct answer is letter A, to allow the prohibition of the establishment of foreign military bases. Uh, from 1946 to 1991, the Philippines maintained a close military relationship with the United States, um, which, includes, uh, which includes hosting several American military bases on its territory. However, uh, this relationship was marked by controversy and protests from various sectors of Philippine society who viewed the presence of foreign military forces as an infringement of the country's sovereignty. So, mula 1946 po hanggang 1991 ay nakabase po yung uh, ilang uh, Amerikano dito sa ating teritoryo, yung uh, military bases po nila. Ngunit, ito ay naging controversial po nang magprotesta ang iba't ibang sektor ng lipunan sa ating bansa. Kasi nakitaan, ita, nakitaan nila ng paglabag sa kasarinla ng ating bansa. So, kumbaga ngayon, ang patakaran ng Pilipinas tungkol sa mga foreign military bases ay uh, naglalayo ng Pilipinas na mag-ingat sa pakikipag-ugnayan upang mabalanse ang uh, benepisyo o kumbaga uh, mabalance natin yung benefits of uh, increased military cooperation with the need to maintain its sovereignty and independence. Kasi kapag papayagan ng Pilipinas na magkaroon ng mga foreign military bases dito sa ating teritory, Parang sinasabi na rin ng ating bansa na magkaroon sila ng control over the Philippine sovereignty. Question number 8. What is the significance of the Regalian Doctrine in Philippine land ownership? Is it all lands in the Philippines belong to the state? Or all lands in the Philippines belong to the indigenous peoples? All lands in the Philippines belong to the Spanish crown? Or all lands in the Philippines belong to the American government. The correct answer is letter A. All lands in the Philippines belong to the state. Ngunit, ano nga ba ang Regalian Doctrine? Ang Regalian Doctrine po ay isang legal concept which, uh, which is significant in Philippine land ownership because uh, it establishes the principle that all lands and natural resources in the country are owned by the state or the Regalian or royal government. And at the same time, the Regalian Doctrine po, uh, it was first introduced during the Spanish colonial period and uh, was later incorporated into Philippine law under the 1935 Constitution. So it is very clear that the Regalian Doctrine states that all lands in the Philippines belong to the state. Ibig sabihin yung state po ang may karapatan o uh, magmayari ng lahat ng lupain and, and natural resources in the country. At ayon din po sa Regalian Doctrine, ang mga private individuals and corporations may also acquire land ownership rights through grants or concessions from the government. Ibig sabihin nito na lahat ng lupain, not otherwise classified as private, public, or timberlands, are also considered part of the public domain and are subject to the control and disposition of the state. Next, we have question number 9. 
What is the role of Congress in the delineation of the Philippines' territorial boundaries? To approve the President's proposal for delineation? To propose its own delineation? To approve the delineation proposed by the Department of Foreign Affairs? To delegate the power of delineation to the President? Um, the role of Congress in the delineation of the Philippines' territorial boundaries is uh, primarily legislative in nature. Um, the, con uh, the Congress, as a country's legislative body, uh, they have the power to enact laws and make decisions that affect the country's territory and territorial boundaries. But first, para mas lalo nating maunawaan ang tanong, ano nga ba ang delineation? Kapag sinabi nating delineation, it refers to the process of defining or marking the boundaries or limits of a particular area, territory, or jurisdiction. It involves determining the precise geographical boundaries of a specific land or water area such as a country, state, province, or district. Ibig sabihin po, pag sinabi nating delineation, kumbaga ito yung pagmamark or pag, uh, paglalagay ng mga markings sa mga boundaries or limits ng isang particular na area, na isang country, or territory. At ang uh, delineation po, uh, it plays a critical role in uh, defining and protecting the country's territorial integrity. And at the same time, uh, delineation, it ensures that uh, the land and water resources are properly managed and regulated. And at the same time, it also promotes a sustainable development of the country. Um, in the Philippines, the power to propose for delineation of territorial boundaries depends on the specific context or area involved. Uh, kumbaga, yung power to propose for delineation of territorial boundaries dito sa Pilipinas is uh, typically vested in the appropriate uh, government agencies like LGUs or other relevant stakeholders. Ngunit, hindi po pwedeng magpo-propose yung President for Delineation. Ibig sabihin mali na yung letter A. Kasi, here in the Philippines, the President does not have the power to propose delineation of territorial boundaries on his or her own. Uh, the delineation of territorial boundaries is governed by specific laws, rules, and procedures which usually require the involvement of multiple government agencies and stakeholders. And ang um, delineation of national territorial boundaries uh, such as those in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone uh, is primarily the responsibility of the national government, specifically the Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA. Uh, which is uh, responsible for negotiating and settling territorial disputes with neighboring countries in accordance with the international law. Uh, this means that the correct answer is letter C, to approve the delineation proposed by the Department of Foreign Affairs. Ibig sabihin yung uh, DFA yung magpo-propose ng delineation at saka yung Congress ang mag-a-approve ng delineation proposal. Also, the DFA is uh, responsible for the formulation and implementation of the Philippines' foreign policy, including the country's territorial claims and maritime jurisdiction. Last question, number 10. What is the Philippines' stance on nuclear weapons within its territory? The correct answer is letter D, to allow the prohibition of the presence of nuclear weapons. Since ang Philippines is a signatory to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons or NPT, uh, in which it is a multilateral treaty aimed at preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and promoting nuclear disarmament. Uh, as a signatory, the Philippines has committed itself to the goal of a nuclear weapon-free world and has pledged not to develop, acquire, or possess nuclear weapons. And kung babasahin din naman natin yung 1987 Philippine Constitution, it uh, explicitly prohibits the presence of nuclear weapons within the country's territory. Uh, ito ay nakasaad sa Article 2, Section 8 of the Constitution. It states that the Philippines, consistent with the national interest, adopts and pursues a policy of freedom from nuclear weapons in its territory. And that's all for this video and I hope na marami kayong na-intake na mga new knowledge about the Article 1 or the National Territory of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. 
And I will upload more videos about sa iba pang mga articles of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel para mas updated ka when new videos are uploaded. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.